verses 1 through 16, what made the wise men wise. There we are. Now, when Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea in the days of Herod the king, behold, there came wise men from the east to Jerusalem, saying, Where is he that is born king of the Jews? This is one thing that made them wise. They wanted to know where Jesus was. Okay, we have seen his star in the east, and we have come to worship him. That makes a wise man wise. You know who to worship. Okay, next. When Herod the king heard these things, he was troubled, and all Jerusalem with him. When he had gathered all the chief priests and scribes of the people together, he demanded of them where Christ should be born. And they said unto him, In Bethlehem of Judea. I wonder how they knew that. For thus it is written by the prophet. In other words, it's recorded in scripture, in prophecy, where he was going to be born. (laughs) That makes a wise man wise. You believe what the Bible says. So if you're going to hunt for somebody, better best start where the Bible says. Hallelujah. Okay. But thou Bethlehem in the land of Judea or Judah, Art thou least among the princes of Judah? For out of thee shall he come a governor that shall rule my people Israel. I'll read a scripture later that's the parallel to that back in Micah chapter 5 and 2. You can quote it, memorize it in Bible school, okay? Then Herod, when he had privately called the wise men, inquired all of them diligently what time the star appeared. He sent them to Bethlehem. Looks like the king sort of believed the word too, didn't they? Bethlehem and said, go and search diligently. That's what makes a wise man wise. He doesn't just search. He searches diligently and he searches till he finds. He doesn't give up. All right? Diligently for the young child. And when you have found him, you can't call off the search. You got to find him. All right? And then bring me word again that I may come and worship him also. If you read the Christmas story much before, you know that when Herod mentioned he wanted to worship the king, he had no intentions of worshiping him. He was going to kill him because he was a threat. All right? But if you're a wise man, sometimes you can discern some spiritual things of selfish motives. Let's go on. When they had heard the king, they departed, and lo, the star which they saw in the east went before them till it came and stood over where the young child was. When they saw the star, they rejoiced with exceeding great joy. And when they were come into the house, they saw the young child with Mary his mother, fell down and worshipped him, and when they had opened their treasures, they presented unto him gifts, and notice the gifts, Gold, frankincense, and myrrh. Three very typical substances that we'll mention a little later. And being warned of God in a dream. Here's wise men again. Here's the motives coming here. Warned of God in a dream that they should not return to Herod. They departed into their own country another way. Can I give you the punchline here? When you come in contact with Jesus, you never go home the same way. Hallelujah. (laughs) All right. And when they had departed, behold, the angel of the Lord appeared to Joseph in a dream, saying, Arise, take the young child and his mother, flee into Egypt, and be there until until I bring thee word, uh, for Herod will seek the young child to destroy him. He arose, he took the young child and his mother by night, departed into Egypt. Just exactly what the Lord said. That's a wise man too, isn't it? He was there until the death of Herod that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken by the Lord, by the prophet, saying, Out of Egypt have I called my son. I think that's the end. No, one more verse. Herod, when he saw that he was mocked of the wise men, was exceedingly wroth and sent forth and slew all the children that were in Bethlehem and in all the coasts thereof from two years old and under, according to the time 
which he had diligently inquired of the wise men. So two years had passed. He was going back two years, make it all inclusive to get the job done. Lord Jesus, tonight we pray that you would help us to impart what you have given to us to the folks here this evening and realize that more than just uh, some folks in the Old, or Old and New Testament were wise. Lord, you can make us wise today, wise unto salvation, I pray. In Jesus' name, amen. I want to relay the Christmas story to you about the wise men coming to seek Jesus and why they were called wise men, and draw some parallels to us, hopefully that we can be wise as well. Now, uh, I'm talking about men, but that includes ladies, okay? Yeah, wear that. And wise men still seek him today. Uh, if you studied any of the books of the Bible, in the Old Testament, it's, it's called some wisdom books. Among those is the book of Proverbs. Proverbs gives us a few de definitions as to what wisdom is. And he tells us the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. So if you want to be a wise man or wise woman, it's necessary that you fear the Lord. That fear of the Lord we're talking about is not uh, cowering down thinking he's going to hit you with a baseball bat. That's, we don't need to be afraid of the Lord in that manner. Fear of the Lord here is that you live right and free from sin. All right, so then another definition there is to depart from evil. That is the beginning of wisdom and the gaining of knowledge that makes one wise. In this Christmas story, the wise men went in search of the Christ child and there were some questions in their mind that they wanted answered and there's some questions in our mind because of it tonight that we need to answer in this message one question, how many wise men were there? And we'll tell you in a minute. Who were these wise men? Hopefully you can find that out. And where were these wise men from? These answers were in the text that we read to you. You may not have picked it up right away, but uh, let's discover it here. First question, how many wise men were there? And everybody's quick to say there were three. The Bible really doesn't say there were three. I don't know how many there were. I know there was more than one. It could have been two, three, four, five, six. I don't know. We just know there were wise men. Well, where did the three come from? Probably it's because there were three gifts that were presented. Gold, frankincense, and myrrh, if they had one apiece. And so be careful to put it in its right context. All right, we know there are three gifts. We don't know how many wise men there could have been more. Well, who were these wise men? They're the magi, uh, those that had an occupation of studying the stars. They were scientists, and we don't have much more information than that on them, and much remains a mystery. But they certainly were interested in one special star that acted differently than all the others. And this star was to follow them to where the, or to lead them to where the Christ child was. Now, where were these men from? As far as the place given a name, I really don't know. The Bible just says they were from the east. So somewhere's in the east, just exactly where, I don't know. Now, I want to say something here, and hopefully you won't throw stones at me just yet. Okay? It says they were wise men, not wise women. Ladies, don't stone me yet. <laughs> Had they been wise women, they would have asked for some directions. And possibly they would have arrived on time instead of two years later. And they would have got the stable all clean instead of complaining how dirty it was. And they would have clothed the young child <laughs> and dressed the kid and had the presents wrapped. But they were wise men. Wise men don't ask directions. They just take the long way around. <laughs> I'm okay now? <laughs> All right, let's continue on here. What made the wise men wise? It wasn't their collective knowledge. All three of them or four of them, five or six together, putting all their knowledge, that's not what made them wise men. It wasn't the occupation that they had. They're called magi, those who study the stars. That's not necessarily what made them wise, being scientists. It wasn't that they were from the east, and we can't even locate the exact uh, 
a location where they were from, and it wasn't that they were men or ladies. What was it that made these wise still remains a question that hopefully we can answer this evening and why they're referred to as wise men. I'd like to suggest five things that made them wise. Number one was their search for Jesus. Amen. Their search for Jesus was indeed a literal search. They were ready to travel the globe to find the Christ child, this special one that was to be the Messiah. So not only a literal search, it was physical, it was geographical as well. Now our search tonight for Jesus may not be uh, geographical, but ours would be spiritual. And we need to search for Jesus Christ till we find him. I'm reminded of the songwriter and a song that probably is lost now, but I love it. I searched for him. I knew not what I searched for. I longed for him and knew not what I longed for till I found Jesus. And I knew that I would search no more because he filled that longing down in my soul. There's a search by mankind, and they'll try to fill it with all kinds of things, but the Lord himself reserved a place right in the heart that will not be satisfied, content, nor fulfilled till you find Jesus. Amen. Now it's been tried to be filled with a lot of things, whether it's education, whether it's occupation, or even by a commandment of Herod to go find him. No, only Jesus is going to fulfill that longing in our hearts bring to you a scripture that's found in Psalm chapter 19, verse 1. I don't know if I actually put that on the scriptures, Tim. But it talks about the heavens declare the glory of God, and the firmament showeth his handiwork. This is one of the things that teaches us there is a God. Amen. There is a God. No such thing as an atheist, is there? I mean, he's got signs of a creator all around him. The firmament shows his handiwork. It happened to be the firmament where the star appeared and was going to lead these uh, wise men to the Christ child. I could also take you to the book of Romans chapter 1 and mentions there that nature teaches us some things. Why? Because the Lord put it in there uh, instinctively or whatever word you want to use to describe that. And so what made the wise men wise their search for Jesus? And by the way, the church is not the only place where you can find him. A lot of people think, well, I need to go to church to find him. That's great. You can find him here. <laughs> but the scripture tells us he's omnipresent. Everywhere present, nowhere's absent. Those wise men could have found him right where they were, <laughs> as far as your spirit's concerned. But they were looking for a physical baby, and they were following this star. So... Yes, you can find him at church, but there are some other places that you might find him as well. I'll, I'll list a few here tonight that found him in other places. Matter of fact, Moses, he came in contact with the Lord in a desert while he was at work looking after sheep. The Lord appeared unto him in a burning bush, and a voice spoke and put off the shoes. The place where you're standing is holy ground. I'm thankful the Lord can talk to people in more places than just the church building. Gideon, when he was harvesting wheat and he was down threshing by the floor and the Lord came and made himself real to him there. Peter, while he was cleaning his nets. These are all examples of the Lord coming to your workplace and, find, and you find him there. Matthew, he was collecting taxes and the Lord appeared unto him. And the wise men were studying stars. These are examples of the Lord making himself real to people while they're working. Hallelujah. The Lord can also come to you or talk to you at home. I don't have a biblical example tonight, but I can tell you of a testimony that all of you will recognize. Anybody know a man by the name of C.B. Dudley? When he'd testify and talk about the old lard pail out in the shed where he kneeled down and God talked to him there. Amen. You can find him at home. This next one I reserve a little bit. You can find him at school or used to be able to. Until our politicians told him he wasn't welcome there. Maybe you can't find him at school now. I'll give you a secret. And find a, a closet somewhere at the school 
where the politicians don't know exist, and you can find Jesus there. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. He's everywhere present and nowhere is absent. Oh, glory. Now, I don't need to know everything about the Lord to be able to know him. I'm glad I know more than some people. But the more you know, the more that you're responsible for. But I can tell you Jesus is an awesomely wonderful, good Savior. And been good to me down through the years. And just where your search for Jesus will find him, it may be different in, in different cases. It could be at work, it could be at home, at school, anywhere. The Lord, and when you search for him, he will make himself known. The wise men were wise because they believed the scriptures. Where do we begin our search? The question was asked, where are we going to find this Christ child? Well, someone come up with the idea. They were reading the Bible and in the prophets, in Micah chapter 2 and verse 5, But thou, Bethlehem, Euphrata, though thou be little among the thousands, yet out of thee shall he come forth, who is to rule Israel, whose goings forth have been from old, from everlasting. Prophecy. Now, if the Bible said that, probably the best place we could start is Bethlehem. We believe the scripture. Now, if you believe the scripture, you obey the scripture. And that's exactly what these wise men did. The prophet said he was to be born in Bethlehem. Do you? We believe the Bible. That's where we're going to start our search. I want to tell you something tonight. If you want to find Jesus, one of the best places to start your search is in the Word of God. <laughs> Amen. Because you cannot separate Jesus from his Word. That tells me we should be reading his Word to find out more about him. Amen. It's interesting that he will give more knowledge to those that ask of him. And that was a promise in scripture to seek him and he will make himself known. Now, so you can know Jesus better by reading his word. There's a scripture over in Acts somewhere that mentions about the Gentiles. Uh, they, they would read the scripture, but it didn't profit them. Why? Because it wasn't mixed with faith. That was the Gentiles. And uh, I don't know whether I should confess this or not. <laughs> I've been reading a lot of the Bible lately. And I do want to finish for the end of the year so I can get one of those uh, things that said I completed the Bible in the year. Actually, I'm on my second time through. And I'm going to start the book of Revelation tomorrow. I'm that far already again. But just in the last three weeks, I've read from Ezekiel clear up to Revelation. Can't tell you much of what I read. I'm sorry if it's been truthful. You say, why? I'm speed reading to get through. Oh, what's the point of that? Just to say I read it through. The word of God needs to be mixed with faith. Amen. And let it speak to you. Hallelujah. And so when you read the word of God, please don't speed read. Please don't read it just to say I read it. Read it to get something from it. Mix it with faith. Yes. Praise the Lord. And so I've determined to do something different with my Bible reading next year, okay? It's going to take me the year to get through the Bible. <laughs> say, well, I'm going to slow down <laughs> and read it to receive. Amen. The third thing that made the wise men wise is they did not quit. They went and searched diligently. They believed the scripture. They started in Bethlehem. And they said, we don't care if this is a lifetime journey, a lifetime search. We're going to find him. Because that's part of the instructions. Search till you find. Search diligently until you find. So quitting wasn't an option. They were determined to find I think it was Butch I mentioned to this week, or he mentioned to me, that was a long journey. Yes, it was. There was over a 1,000 miles. They didn't have cars back then, nor airplanes. It was just hoofmobile. <laughs> and uh, if you're going to travel on a camel for a 1,000 miles, it's going to take more than two days. And if you're searching along the way, it's going to take a good more days. 
Let's just say we're going to average five miles a day. That's 200 days. That's just a guesstimate. How many has ever started something in about 10 days in, you get bored? You know, one a different challenge. Something. Here was a determination. We're on the way. We've met with obstacles. We've met with everything there is to meet up with. And we've even fought with things going through our mind, Butch. And, uh, you know, but we're not quitting. <laughs> and uh, so day one was in the first 30 days. One month has passed. One season. Three months have gone by. A year has gone by. Think, oh, my, this is going to take a lifetime. However, they're determined to find them, and they're not going to quit. Uh, I don't know if they were employed with the government. Sorry for those who are. And have sick days. But I'm sure in 200 days, there were some sick days. And I'm sure that in 200 days, they were hungry, some of them. And there was a cost involved in providing meals on the road. I'm sure in 200 days, they come across some critics. <laughs> You'll never find him. <laughs> and peer pressure saying, look, this is just a waste of precious time. Why don't you just call off the search? And they said, no, we're wise men. We're not turning back. We will not quit. We are determined to find. I've got, yes, here it is right here. Anyone know that course we've come too far to look back? Yeah, come too far to look back now. And I'm too near my heavenly home to turn back now. A little story, you've heard me tell this one before. It was blamed on a newfie. It's 100 miles across the strait from uh, North Sydney to Port of Bass, but he was swimming, and he got 80 miles and said, I can't make it, and he turned back. Now, what's the moral of that story? <laughs> he definitely didn't make it back, right? But if he had kept going, he might have made it. It was closer to where he's going. I'm too near my heavenly home to turn back now. There's no such thing as giving up or quitting. I'm too close to the shore. Amen. And so we're going to find our search. They tell me of a man named Thomas Edison. Is that, that uh, familiar to anybody? Yeah, he invented a light bulb, not the LED ones. But they tell me that this scientist, he, after 500 attempts, still did not have a solution of a metal that would conduct enough electricity to, to uh, produce heat and light. And he come up with the critics and all that, too. Why don't you just give it up? You're never going to find it. He said, aren't you discouraged? No, he said, I am not discouraged. He said, I've just discovered 500 things that don't work. The next one might. Hallelujah. I don't care if it takes 600. I'm closer to finding out what it is now than I was when I started. I'm going to, and we have light today because of, a man's determination like that. We need to be determined in our search. We're going to find Jesus. And he's going to make a difference in our life. And so wise men, yeah, they don't quit. Uh, it was put in me, I, I don't know if it's on mom's side or dad's side of nature, but I like to finish what I start. Yeah, I've seen a lot of people start something, get it half done, move on to something else get that half done or quarter done, move on to something else, and they have a whole lot of projects and none of them finished. There's a sense of satisfaction and pride in being able to say it's done and move on to the next one. Amen. And so I aim to make the end of a Christian journey. Amen. I made up my mind a long time ago. I've started in this race, and I'm going to finish this race that I have begun determined just like the wise men. Now, their determination and their search and believing in the Bible paid off because they did find him. That was in the text, wasn't it? And when they found him, they knew what to do. They worshiped him. And wise men still worship the Lord. They sure do worship the Lord. Yes, we found him. We believe the scriptures. The scriptures testify of him. He's made a difference in our life. We've traveled thus far, 
and we're going to bow down and worship him. Matter of fact, we got gifts to give him, and these gifts are not cheap. I hope you're not one that offers to Jesus cheap stuff. As a matter of fact, he requires more than that. He requires your all. Amen. Amen. We give him our all. They bowed down to him. There was gifts of gold, which is very expensive metal, but it's also typical of his divine nature. So it really fit this situation. It wasn't just a child. It was the Christ child. It was the Messiah. That was deity uh, wrapped up in flesh. Here's some gold, frankincense. That talks about the holiness of our God. Wow. Frankincense was used a lot in the offerings and in spices that made up some anointing oil and other things for the tabernacle and clear up through. So frankincense, the holiness part of him. And I want to tell you, Jesus Christ, there's none like him. Amen. Amen. He said, be ye holy for I am holy. That's his essence. That's his character. He is holy. They offered him frank and myrrh. Myrrh is a spice that comes from a tree. They use it in the embalming uh, trade, and it's to last or preserve. And here was like a, a spice or a substance being used in prophecy. He's going to die, but we want him to live. He's going to live forevermore. So thank the gold, frankincense, and myrrh. Oh, such uh, apt and wonderful gifts for a Christ child. Going to call his name Jesus, for he shall save his people from their sins. Wow. Number five, the wise men were wise because they were able to obey, but also to discern some things spiritually. Being warned of God in a dream of Herod's evil intentions, it says, they departed and went home a different way. This way in the scripture was literally a different way. Physically and geographically, they didn't go home the same route that they came. Uh, I, I've learned something about that since I, I've got my motorcycle, okay? Uh, car, you just go and come back, go and come back. A motorcycle, you never drive the same road twice. And I love it. Well, you learn so much more. <laughs> And you see so much more. And so these uh, folks, uh, they came one way, they went home a different way. But more than geographical or physical, they went home different. There was something on the inside of them that changed and was different because they came in contact with Jesus. And I'm telling you tonight, you can be a wise man or a wise woman when you come in contact with Jesus. You'll never be the same again. You'll not go home the same way that you came. Love the song that we sing. You won't leave here like you came in Jesus' name. The Holy Ghost of Acts is just the same. What's the Holy Ghost? That's the return spirit of Jesus Christ. <laughs> Amen. And I'm thankful for the Holy Ghost. They went home a different way, and they're rejoicing. They're worshiping God and Herod is as mad as he can be. Say, why? He's mocked. He was the one that sent them. <laughs> He's paid their wages for two years. <laughs> Where are they? Somehow, they discerned his ulterior motives and went home a different way. And we know that Herod tried all things destroying children two years and older, back dated to when the command was given to trying to get the Christ child. But I want to tell you, Jesus is still very much alive. I feel him in my heart, in my soul, in my life today. And I want to say that wise men still search for him. Wise men still believe the Bible. And they get to know more about Jesus by reading his word. Wise men don't give up. They continue on. I forgot to read. I got a poem here I want to read on that. You've probably heard this at a graduation exercise before. Don't quit. Yeah, let me read it again. When things go wrong, as sometimes they will, when the road you're trudging seems all uphill, when the funds are low and debts are high and you want to smile but you have to sigh, when care is pressing and you're down quite a bit, rest if you must but never quit. Life is queer with all its twists and turns, and everyone of us must learn and many fellows turns when about you might have won had you stuck it out. Don't give up through the pace seems slow. You may succeed with just one more blow. Often the goal is nearer than it seems to the faint and the faltering man. 
Often the struggler has given up when he might have captured the victor's cup, and he learned too late when night came down how close he was to the golden crown. Success is failure turned upside down or inside out, the silver tint of the, the clouds of doubt. And when you never can tell how close you are, it may be near and when it seems so far. Stick to the fight when, it's, when your heart is hit. It's when things seem the worst that you must not quit. Keep on. We're too near the heavenly home to turn back now. So yes, wise men still seek him. They believe the Bible. They know where to start. They obey the Bible. They're on the way. Okay? They're determined and will not quit. And thankfully, they find him and know what to do. Bow down and worship him and give him your best. Continue to worship him, and he will even cause you to discern spiritual things. One thing about that is, when you come in contact with Jesus, do not go home the same way that you came. Amen. God bless you tonight. Would you stand?